Well, hi everybody. Say, I got six more loads like this, and we're going to take this rock down by the pond. If you'd like to see how the project turns out, join me right now on Today in Iowa. Well, hi everybody. Bill here. Thanks for taking time out of your busy lives to watch one of my videos. I sure appreciate it. Here's an overview of the rock. And now I'm going to take you down to the pond and show you where we're going to put this stuff and what our uh, goals are going to be. Uh, here's the pond. Here's the discharge end. You're going to see the pipe in there. I'm going to show that by an arrow right there. And then this is a pond liner that I'm going to put over that uh, the dam there to help uh, scouring. So if the water comes down there, I don't want it to scour around that pipe. You can see how thick it is. So I'll get that in place. Then we're going to cover it with riprap and uh, not only make it look a little bit nicer, but I think protect that edge from scouring and, and wash damage. Well, I got uh, started here first thinking, how am I going to load this stuff up into the loader? I've always seen riprap of this size kind of difficult to, uh, to get into the bucket. And it's hard on the buckets, too. It's large chunks of rock and... Uh, as you can see, I, I got kind of frustrated real quick with this and said, this isn't going to work at all. So I turned the uh, tractor around. I thought, I'll just use that bucket and beat the heck out of that bucket and pull that rock down. So maybe it's a little more shallow and I can get the bucket under it and get it loaded up that way. So that's what we're going to do now. I've been tempted to buy the uh, teeth that attach to the front of a bucket, but I never have because I have the backhoe. So if there's something I want to get teeth in new, I just use the, the, the backhoe. Does that make sense? I use a backhoe so much. You just, uh, until you have one, you really can't uh, think all the projects you're going to want to use it on. Okay, now that I got it spread out a little more shallow, and I think it's going to go in a little bit easier into the bucket so we can take it down, down to the pond. Take a look at these billy goats. If the tractor's out, they want to be out. They just love being around the tractor. They're like tractor goats. If you have any experience with billy goats, they're, kind of, they're nice pets. Okay, I wanted to show you the uh, hill that I have to go up and down. I'll probably have to go up and down this thing, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 times. And my thought process was I would back down with the load in the front because I've got the backhoe on the back for weight and the rear tires are filled with beet juice so all my weights on the back if I were to start sliding I'd simply drop the bucket and stop the machine all right here we go we're getting close to the pond now 800 feet is what I measured that would be one direction so a round trip would be 1600 feet let's see 40 trips be 64,000 feet divided by 500, 5,285 feet. Gosh, that's 12 miles. Man, I don't know. It might be, I, I bet it was six miles, seven miles easy back and forth. Oh, anyways. So I brought a few loads down. That circle right there shows another spring. There's a spring weeping into the pond there. So I got to be careful when I get in there so I don't get stuck or tip over or do something stupid. So I'm going to show you my uh, technique for getting down here and turning around. And then we're just going to shorten these trips up and not take you long on every one of them. So it's just going to be back and forth, uh, spreading the rock out over the, uh, the, the mat. You can see my backhoe is swung in that direction because uh, as I come across that sloping hill, I get a little pucker factor. So I swing that uh, backhoe to the uphill side and then I'll swing it back the other direction when I leave. All right, and this is kind of humorous. It's up the hill, get a load of rock, back down the hill, <laughs> and repeat, like I said, 30 or 40 times. So here we put a pretty nice den in it now, and we're getting quite a bit of rock around there. Now I want to take a few shots. So are you like me? Your best thoughts come at 2, 3, 4 in the morning? So last night I woke up and thought, you know, what if that 
intake pipe were to get clogged up? Would the water go up and over and cause erosion problems? So I thought, you know what, I'm going to dig out a secondary path, a secondary rock ditch. And what I'm doing here is I want to establish the inlet of that pipe. In other words, at what elevation does the water start running into that pipe? And then I'm going to build a ditch closer to the camera, fill it with rock, and then we're going to, that'd be my secondary exit for water. It's not often, but sometimes we will have a three or four inch rain. These things are really sensitive, and I'm not real good at it. I only use it once or twice a year. So you get a fast tone, kind of a slower tone, and then a solid tone means you're right on. That's four inches below the top of the pipe. There, four inches below the pipe. So we'll dig our trench, have the tone sound on it. We'll be four inches below the top of the pipe, our rip right. We'll fill up a few inches, but our flow line should be four inches below that pipe. And then we'll put a small slope on that trench. This should work. So I hope I'm explaining it clear enough. Right around that circle area, I'm going to dig out a ditch. The ditch will be a little bit higher than the exit pipe. So that if the exit pipe is overwhelmed, the water will go to the ditch and drain out. All right, before we get into that, I want to bring some rock down and put it around the bank that slopes enough to hold the rock. A lot of this pond is very steep and I couldn't put rock on the side. But here I kind of like the decorative look of it. And I'm also using it to measure the height of the pond. Take a look at this through the project and you'll see that the water is below the rock. And then after we're done making some improvements, I'm going to be happy to report the water's way up into the rock. All right, to get started then, I'm going to start pulling some of that uh, rock back. The red arrow is showing you the original exit pipe, so keep that in mind as we go through this. I'm going to pull the rock off the uh, pond mat without uh, damaging it, I hope. And then we'll start digging down through the soil and get everything established. So from time to time, I'll pull out the uh, elevation stick there and we'll see how, how we're doing. I always like to keep the relationship with how deep I have to go yet. And so at this point, fast beeps or slow beeps, I don't care. I can just get a rough idea of where I'm at. There, you can see when it went solid, there's the, the bottom of that uh, pipe that I've been trying to match. So now I got a big picture of where we're at. That is really close. So one last check with the survey stick here. Right there, really close. You may be asking yourself, why did I put the exit pipe so high up on that rock? And it's because I wanted to increase the depth of the pond without spilling over the dam. So it's kind of a balancing act here. And that's one reason I want to put in this secondary exit path. And so we're just going to scrape it down here and we're going to recheck ourselves and see where we're at. And then we'll dig ourselves across that, fill it in with rock and pond mat, and we'll have a nice secondary exit. You might be questioning my configuration of the, the bucket there. I'm, I'm just dragging the teeth across to maybe get down four or five, six inches and see where I'm at. I don't want to get real aggressive and then have to put the soil back. See, we're really close here. Now, as you can imagine, as you get back into the dike further, it rises. So I'm going to have to be more aggressive here on my digging and get myself a little bit deeper. So it's just going to be a repeat, dig, take a measurement, and work our way across here. 
And while we watch this, uh, let's get a little, few shout-outs out here to everyone. I want to say hi to Sean. He wrote me and said he's really enjoying his land play. Land playing. Glad that's working out well, well for you. I'd like to say hi to Andrew. Andrew's been with me for a long time. Uh, moved to Texas from Oregon. I hope you're enjoying that uh, warm weather down there in Texas, Andrew. I hope that's working out well for you. Had a viewer from Stanley, Minnesota say hello. Heard from 31 Sweet Corn. Joe and Hillary. They're out in uh, Port Angeles, Washington. And I appreciate them checking in. Looks like a real pretty part of the world. Lee Dunn checked in, said he's really enjoying his lamb pride greater. He has one just like I do, and he said he loves it. John Metcalf uh, said hello. John's been with me a long time, too, out in Big Sky Country. And Mark Ward and Who's the Boss checked in, and so many more people. I'll get a few more shout-outs in a little bit. Appreciate it when you take time to send me a message of where you're uh, watching from. Thanks, everybody. Here's an example of how much the uh, dike road, the dike, the dam, has risen in height. So I'm getting a lot deeper here as we get near the end. The aqua colored or turquoise colored pipe over in the end, that's the ditch. That's our exit. That's what we want to get to. And looking ahead, you know, at some videos I've got coming out here in the future, I've got a, a video coming out on pond repairs. The uh, crawfish, crayfish, ever how you pronounce it from where you're from, created some uh, tunnels in my dike and gave me all kinds of headaches. And I think we're winning that battle. I'm going to have a video out on that. I hope you'll tune in for that. Uh, I'm going to show you how I reseeded a large area of my yard using the soil pulverizer. So if you like that uh, implement, you don't want to miss that. And another one comes to mind is uh, snatch blocks. How to use a snatch blocks uh, box, a snatch block if you own timber and how to drag timber out of the woods safely. All right, here I'm getting towards the end now. I'm just kind of cleaning up the bottom and leveling it out because this is going to be my uh, flow line through here. This will be the bottom. All right, so as I go along here, you probably can see the marker sticks a little bit higher. But remember, I wanted to put a little pitch on it. If you look behind me where the mat is, that's kind of the highest point. Good. Good to and if the water gets into this, then I want to flow away and just not be stagnant in there. So I am going a little bit deeper as we're moving towards the uh, ditch, the exit point for this, uh, this exit. Hey, let's get a few more uh, shout-outs in here. Uh, Pete Bush checked in, said uh, he had a couple questions, and he would like a comparison of a tiller and a soil pulverizer and a colder packer. I don't have a colder packer, and I just put a yard in using my soil pulverizer, and that video is going to be coming up, Pete, so you're going to want to see that. Uh, I really like that thing. It's like three implements in one, and I'll explain more on that uh, when, that when I have that next video out for you. All right, let's stop the video for a minute. I want to show you two things. The uh, turquoise colored pipe, that's the original uh, drain. I changed from a perforated ribbed uh, drain tile to this rigid pipe, and we have to bring that to daylight. And then the other one where you can see the mat up there, that's our ditch. So we've got two things converging here that I have to keep in mind. All right, here's a good picture of how far we've come. 
the uh, rock ditch there is exposed, and that's as far as the rock is going to go that's going to be exposed. The rest of the pipe will be buried in dirt as I go towards the exit point. I wanted to leave that open, I don't know, to catch rain. I, I just thought it would be smart to leave it open. So with that done, now we're going to go and make our connection to the ditch. And I have to dump the water on my property. There's a fence post right, uh, I'll show it to you here in a minute. And I have to dump on my property, so that's what I'm doing right now. Keep in mind I'm dumping this on top of the pond mat that we used earlier until I ran out. Once I ran out, I went to this VisQueen product. It's a 6 mil, and I doubled or tripled it over. So I'm putting the dirt on top of that, and that'll keep my rock filter, my rock ditch, clean. I've got a few more shout-outs here. I want to say hi. I really appreciate everyone taking time to say hello. I like giving you some recognition for that. Uh, Michael Martin checked in, said he loves his 2025. Uh, Keith Owen, he moved to Colorado from Iowa. Hope you're enjoying it out there, Keith. That's a pretty far in the country, too. Uh, Mark over in Lafayette, man, he's been a uh, viewer, listener, a long time. Helps me out with some videos from time to time. Hope you're having a good summer, Mark. And Randy Jacobs, he asked a good question. He wanted to know why the brake lights are on all the time. I didn't know they were, but I watched the video and they are. Does anyone else have that? Maybe it's just normal design now. Let me know what your thoughts are on that. Is your machine, do the brake lights, are they on all the time? And mine is a, a 2019, I believe. If that's incorrect, I'll put it on there. So let's stop the video a minute. See that red arrow? That's pointing to the property line. There's a post right there. So I'm dumping well into my property. So we're starting to clean things up here. The turquoise pipe, that's the main drain and the rock to the left of it is the secondary exit, the secondary ditch we just built. Now I'll clean that all up with shovel by hand and they'll be uh, all clean. You're going to see it here in a little bit. So a little final uh, grading here up above to kind of smooth things out. I'll get it seated and it'll be mobile. There's a little better picture of it all cleaned up. And I'll get that seated, and we're going to come back and see this uh, two years later. So I think you'll, you'll agree it turned out pretty nice. Again, I'm just kind of roughing the soil around there and spreading things out. And I think it's been a pretty good project. All right, let's go up above and bring the rest of that rock down. I want to finish putting it along the shoreline there, the pond bank. Keep in mind, I can't see anything. I'm looking to my wife for a signal to kind of tip the bucket. See how steep it's getting here? It says rolling into the water. So I don't have too much further to go. This is probably about the end of the line. But I want to clean it up and get it in there. All right, so here's everything in place. You can see how far I took the uh, rock over towards the spring. The spring is that white pipe that's coming out. We're going to fix that here yet this year. And then going around to the dam, uh, that area there with the two exits, and then it comes around uh, towards where I'm at right now walking, and then it gets too steep to put any. So I, I'm real happy with the way that turned out. Um, let me stop at the video a minute. If you've been following my pond projects, you'll remember that I brought a large excavator in and many loads of really good high quality clay to uh, plug a hole here. And that's where the original exit used to be. And a viewer said, you have got to get that out of that dike side and get it somewhere else. And that's the reason I relocated that exit to the position you saw it today. And I haven't had any leaking issues along this area. Oh gosh, it's been five or six years. My wife and I have been working on this pond project for probably eight or nine years, so it's kind of nice the way it's evolving here. But look at the rock, look at the water level, and notice how much lower the water level is to the rock. And we're going to come back to that later. All right, here's an overview picture of what we did. 
Turned out pretty nice. Here, take a look at the water level. It's starting to sneak up even with the rock and it gets better as we go. Now let's go over and take a look at our trench where it exits into the ditch area there. That you can see that fence post back there in the upper right corner indicating the property line. So that turned out well. Well now let's go back two years later. Everything's greened up and it's been here for a while and I can say everything's working real nice. As we were walking towards it, I hope you can see the water level already. It's up on the rocks quite a bit, and I'm really happy about that. That's turned out nice. Here's a couple of pictures of a couple of grass carp I threw in many, many years ago. I hope you can see the size in relation to that little dock. We nicknamed him Old Gus and Mrs. Old Gus. My gosh, they've been in there for six, seven, eight years. Big fish. They weather the winters well, and uh, boy, they've been around a long time. Well, let's go crawl down in and look at the exit, how that's turned out. You can see the weeds have grown up around it as expected. See, we have a little water flow there because the water has risen and is using the exit pipe. Oh man, that looks great. Boy, that's just what we wanted. Now let's go look at the shoreline. Look at how far up the rock, or excuse me, how far up the water is over the rock. Man, that was really a good deal. Now I've since sprung another leak and we'll get into that on another video. But at this time we're enjoying the wind with the higher water level. You can see it's at the bottom of the pipe there and it's right where we wanted it. The leak that we're going to explore in an upcoming video is caused by crawdads or crawfish, depending on where you live and what you call them, but we'll get into that a little bit later. As we pan around here, you'll see a uh, road or a path that I dozed in to get back to the spring, and I want to develop that feature. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Everybody, be kind to each other, stay healthy, I appreciate the uh, privilege of your time. Be sure and come back and see you. Tractor, Buster will be out. If the tractor's out, he's out. Take care, everybody. So long.